I'm glad to be here, and I, I was going to choose a parable from the uh, New Testament, and we know that parables have a way of teaching, and I decided, no, I think I better try a story of my own because that would be a parable, and uh, since it's uh, Thanksgiving close by, I decided uh, to do one that it's, it has to do with Thanksgiving. My story starts when I went to a bookstore on the edge of Torrance, close to um, Redondo Beach, quite a ways from here. Why I was there, I don't know. But uh, I used to like their uh, gift cards because they were very funny. And uh, sometimes if they're too um, mushy, it, they, it doesn't fit. But a funny card for a birthday is always liked. And then I started to read them, and they have the funniest cards. And I didn't realize that by the third card that I was reading, I was laughing so loud that I thought, they're going to throw me out of here. And then I heard a voice from the other side, and there was a lady, and she says, what's going there? You're having so much fun. Can I join you? I said, certainly. So I said, come over and read some of these cards. Well, anyway, I thought I was loud in laughing, but she was hysterical, and I couldn't keep her down. And she said, this is the funniest thing. I'm going to buy some cards because I have a lot of family, and, and I never know what to get them. And then she says to me, she says, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, nothing. And she says, I want you to come to my house to join me and my family to have Thanksgiving dinner. So I said, well, you don't know me and I don't know you. She says, I like you because you have a good sense of humor. You laugh so naturally, and I need some of that because I have a group of people that are my families that they're very hard to do. Anyway, so the next morning I got myself ready, and I said, can I bring something? She says, no, I've got everything. Just bring yourself, and you could bring a guest. So anyway, I got to the place that I was looking for the address, and then I found the place, and there was a couple of people there, and then they started to come, and she introduced me to her family. And she said, you're going to be the buffer for me because these people are really tough. And so anyway, they started. They had hors d'oeuvres, and we ate those first. About an hour later, we all sat at the table, and she said, um, she says, uh, Brother John, you were going to carve the turkey, and she had told me the story of what was happening uh, most, most of the time in, while she had these places. First of all, her brother used to say, oh, this turkey is so dry. So then, then the sister-in-law says, oh, your mashed potatoes need a lot of butter <laughs> and a lot of cream. And then the other sister, she says, you know, I tell you, your, your gravy it's pretty poor, it's really thin, and it needs mushrooms. <laughs> so then the other one goes and he said, you know, <laughs> you got too many marshmallows in your, uh, <laughs> in your sweet potatoes. <laughs> so anyway, she was dealing with this for several years, and she was really disgusted with it. She says, maybe you could help me do something different so I won't have to put up because she says, I'm, I'm a shy person and I hate to hurt their feelings. But this is getting too much because I spent three days, one day to go shop, one day to, sh to chop all the vegetables, get all the stuff together, and then, the, then I get stuck with all the dirty dishes. So I had told her, I says, what you do? The next time you said, John, you're going to do the turkey this year. <laughs> and the, the sister-in-law says, you're going to do the mashed potatoes. And the other one, so... The ones that had complained, that's the one you give them to. And so anyway, they said, yeah, that sounds good. Well, that's a, something different. So anyway, what happened was that at the end of the, the party, you know, they were all leaving. They, they said, uh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the thank you just didn't get to me because it sounded like a bunch of parrots. They could have said, oh, what a lovely meal, what this is right, and the potatoes were great. Anyway, they had pulled it apart. And so what happened that uh, she, she said to them, oh, by the way, uh, there's the, all the pots and pans are still in the, in the kitchen. You go in there and wash them and take them and bring them back. 
So she didn't have that many dishes to do. So when they left, she said, I'm so happy. Everything went like clockwork. So then I, I, I decided to say to myself, I've gone to other, I've been having other invitations and the people have acted the same way. Um, no consideration, they're demanding. I remember one lady that she had served, every, she had been served everything and she was put out because the host did not put any gravy on the table. Remember Elaine? And she said, where's the gravy? And so the poor guy had to go in the kitchen, make some gravy, and he brought it out. And she says, oh, what's the difference now? I ate the meat. I said, no, no consideration. And I said to myself, there's got to be something to make these people think that there's a lot of hard work. So I decided to myself that I would, every day that I went along, I was going to thank people for what they did for me. I started first with, um, I went to, uh, to get a small heater, and I was in, um, in the Home Depot, and it was, it, the box is pretty large, and it's very hard for me to open up the key because the trunk goes up, and then I'm, I can't reach it to come down. And so there was a girl going by, and then, she, oh, she turned around, and she came running, oh, I'll put that in the car for you. And then, uh, so when she got through with that, I said, Thank you for putting that big box in a car because I couldn't have done it. And I thank you for serving in the military because she had fatigues on. And she says, you're the first person that has ever thanked me for something. So then I was going to the post office the next day and uh, I was walking through and then there was a, a fellow that was behind me and I was walking a little ahead of it. So he knew that I was in a walker so he ran to the door and opened it, and, and then I said, you're a gentleman, thank you for opening the door, and your mother must be very proud because she must have taught you. So he says, how did you know? My mother was very tough, and she, she would be so proud. Uh, she's passed on, and you reminded me of her, and you gave me such beautiful thoughts. And then another time that I went to um, a store and I was carrying a few things because very hard for me to, to hold on to things. And there was one lady, she was getting into her car, she ran and, and she said, I'll take those to the car. I said, thank you so much for putting all these groceries, they're very heavy. Individual things I thanked them for, so it's just not just the general. And then one day I, I was outside the, the bank and there was a big, humongous Harley-Davidson motorcycle with so much chrome on it. So I'm just sitting there and I'm looking. Um, first time I seen a big one like that, that was huge, but I couldn't imagine. It had things on the side and it was, and I'm going. And then all of a sudden I hear a voice behind me. It says, hi, little lady. He was uh, one of those uh, uh, guys, you know, the Hell's Angels. And he said, little lady, you shock me. You, you must be proud of this. I certainly am. Look at this chrome. Well, it just, he was so delighted. He says, you know what you could do for me? I'm going to take you for a ride down on 2nd Street. And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> I am pretty scared of that. I've never climbed on, I've climbed on a bicycle and I got off in two minutes and this would certainly do it. Anyway, so he says, you know what, I should be, you get in the back and I would have, love to have one of those shirts. If you don't see any, anybody, if you can read these letters in my t-shirt in the back, my best girlfriend fell off. <laughs> so, so anyway, I says, no, I'm not going to do it. And so he said, you know, you made my day because I have this bicycle, and it's the talk of the town, and now I can go back and tell all these big guys that I had the best person <laughs> do tell me how wonderful my bike is, and she probably doesn't know much about bike. So I look, and I take a picture. I says, yeah, that, you can do that. So he's going to go back and sell, tell all these hell angel guys, he says, my new girlfriend. <laughs> I said, don't start a rumor. Anyway, I met another lady 
uh, from our church I used to go to a long time ago, and she, this is the time she told me the story. She had young kids, teenagers, and she had said every once in a while these kids would come in with other kids that they didn't have a place. They'd come in from back east. They were hippies. And she said, um, okay, they could stay in the den. They have, I get sleeping bags and put them in. And she had them for three days, and then she decided to do this big dinner for Thanksgiving. And she, she was working and working. None of those kids ever said, can I clean your kitchen? Can I clean the front yard? Can I do something? Can I peel? And everything for you. And then they start, she says, one of you will do the opening prayer for the dinner. And so they were saying, oh, thank God, because uh, we got a roof over our head. Thank God, because we get some meals. Thank God, because we were able to, um, to stay here more days than we thought. And she said, wait a minute, stop. I'll take care of that. But you've never said thank you for preparing the meals, doing shopping, taking care, washing dishes, because then my prayer will be, thank you, God, for ha having a wonderful husband that has a good job, that's making the money for me to be able to buy these things and feed these people. You have to get it right. So I felt this way. It was very important for us to acknowledge every little thing because it's to have the attitude of gratitude. Because I see people, they just even, they don't even train their children. I was a single mom for many years and it was very difficult to, to keep a job and I lost my job twice. And I had so many trials in my life. And there was one time at Easter, I think it was Christmas time, that my son came to me and he was only about 10 years old. He says, Mom, there's something missing in the living room over the fireplace. And I said, what is it? He said, a tablet up there that says, home, sweet home. So that told me a lot. He told me that, because he had told me, I don't want any toys. And when he told me that he was so happy, a child, see, out of the mouth of babes, so many times we learn these valuable lessons that he was proud, that he was living, that he had everything he needed. He didn't need anything else. And the only thing that he lacked was to say home sweet home. So I wanted to leave this with you because in appreciation, we should all acknowledge every, because we're here all together. We have many things that we go through, challenges, sicknesses, situations. And if we have just somebody we could talk to and say a few words, you never know when you're lifting that person up because so many times we get too busy, we don't have the time, but five seconds, five minutes, one minute, we get so tied up with uh, mundial things that don't really matter. So we are the church, the building is not. So as we wanna build a healthy church, then we must do for one another and feel what they feel. And in doing that, we create such a strong bond that nothing will break it apart. So I'm leaving these words with you, and I hope you enjoyed.